Okay, I haven't made a video on this yet, but we have to talk about Chain Guard. Chain Guard is actually one of the best abilities in the game. It doesn't seem like it does that much, and especially if you just spam Bond Shield, the Bonded Shield from Lucina. Essentially, Bonded Shield is like a super Chain Guard, but an individual Chain Guard allows you to enemy phase, and enemy phasing is really useful. Enemy phasing can solve positions, it can delete enemies during their turn, you can use it to essentially reduce pressure. So if you have units who can tank and counterattack and kill and deal damage, you can reduce pressure on your team because you're essentially taking advantage of your enemy's turn. And this is a concept in chess uh, where let's say you have, you know, you have, you have, you, or you're playing a timed game, your opponent has so much time, you have so much time. During your opponent's turn, when they're thinking, you're thinking. So taking advantage of your opponent's turn is really useful, and it is something you should strive to do. Now, that being said, chain guarding is kind of like that type of concept where you're taking advantage of your opponent's turn. Uh, now, what it essentially allows, though, is any unit to tank any other enemy, as long as they just get hit once. So it reduce, it negates the first hit, and then the chain guarder takes 20% max HP. Now you can only chain guard at max HP, but you could have a unit who has low max HP, who's easily healed, or even just any unit, just generically run chain guard, so you can just focus on having hard carries. Uh, so in this particular map, I'm just running four units. This is with no DLC. Uh, this is part of my seven man challenge run. So what I'm going to be doing is initiating some hits, probably chain guarding. Uh, now, if I hit here and then chain guard here, I can counterattack this archer. So I'll demo this. This is like a perfect example of how to chain guard. Now these enemies don't attack until you attack them or until you're within range of Hortensia. So that's something to note. But enemy phasing here is gonna be important. Now this archer is going to want to go for the kill. It's probably going to ignore a leer if I have a leer charge in. So, let's see. Yeah, if a leer goes into here and engages and then armor slays, a leer should get ignored, 100%. If Anna goes in, they'll probably focus her. So she's probably going to have to sit this one out. Uh, so we can wait. We can end turn here. So we're going to dive bomb. Now I could dive bomb the archer. But I would like to kill the archer. So let's see. I can kill with this javelin. So I'm gonna take use. Of, I'm gonna make use of enemy phase. Here. It shouldn't attack Fram because it's gonna look at Chloe's avoid rate, like just half of Fram's avoid rate. This thing will have a hard time hitting Fram. It should shoot Chloe. If it doesn't, I'd be shocked. I'd also be confused. All right, so we're going to engage. I'm going to smack this. Oops, I, could, I guess I could use the Rapier. But the Armor Slayer is cooler, so we'll do that. So we'll kill this guy. One thing I could do... So Anna can kill something here. She can almost warp Ragnarok this, but then she gets dived, so she's just going to chill out. Let's say... Here? Okay. Let's see if we predicted the enemy correctly. Are right, we get frozen? Fine. Suicides on a leer. Goes for a leer. Okay. They don't want to go for. <laughs> they don't want to go for the chain. <laughs> Trying to. <laughs> They're ruining my video. No. <laughs> no. All right. It's unfortunate. Why would they do that, though? I guess it doesn't want to die. I mean, that's understandable, but come on, man. We got kids to feed. <laughs> we have kids to feed. All right, let's kill this guy out of spite for him not doing the chain guard thing. All right, now I just have to kill Hort. So I do not have a restore staff, I believe. And I don't think Great Sacrifice restores. No. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it does. Yeah, there we go. So we can do... 
See, now she can't escape, though. Actually, no, I can survive. Yeah, check this out. This is gonna be funny. This is gonna look really stupid, but... Alright, so pull that debuff off. Dust off that debuff. 112 avoid. 153% chance to die. I'll take those odds. I will take that chance. I will load star rush. I could use Mercurius for the XP, might as well. To level up, I'll take it. I think Chloe can just straight up one round her. The Hort? Let's see. Oh yeah, she's fast enough. Oh my god, dude, she's so fast. She's too fast. So when the enemy can't chain guard, just use your hard carries to decimate them. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't go after Chloe there. Now, if it's the only target, they'll go after it. But they're not going to always do what you want them to, unfortunately. And I'm also doing a playthrough on this, so I'm not going to redo this. All right, whoops. Yeah, we'll send that. Send the freeze away. Okay, let's see. That's right. 3% hit rate. <laughs> Dodge tanking is real. Alright, then we'll have Lady Anna come in here and clean up this mess. <laughs> 96 crit. It's pretty sick. Alright, what do we got? You know, this guy wants to die. We'll Mercurius him. We'll take our revenge. <laughs> I can't believe it didn't attack them. Why would it not? Maybe her stats are too high? She is my highest level unit. They usually prioritize things they can kill, even through Chain Guard. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the enemy can't perceive Chain Guard, it just like ignores it. Same thing with like Bonded Shield, it doesn't perceive it. It just is like, oh I can kill this and we'll go for it. Alright, check this out. Some big AoE heals. Heals yourself back to full. I like how her build is 3, it's hilarious. She needs Master Seal really badly. Okay, so Chain Guard usually is more useful than this. Obviously, this is early game. Uh, for late game stuff, you're kind of holding down fronts, and that's where it really shines, I would say. When you have multiple groups of enemies attack you along multiple like choke points. Uh, these early game maps, they tend to just be more simplistic. A bunch of enemies are just in like, a kind of wide open area. A lot of the later game maps, the late game maps, tend to be more almost like punishing where there's like dudes attacking you from every direction so having a few chain guarders is useful just for tanking a single enemy the other thing that's good about chain guard is as you saw earlier like the archer wouldn't even shoot chloe so even though it didn't kill it didn't attack her and get killed on her javelin it wouldn't even attack her like i think it calculated out that it would die i'm pretty sure this is what happened it looked at chloe and it's like i can almost kill this it probably wouldn't even one round her and it looked at, I'm going to take, you know, get, getting doubled, huge damage, dead. So it probably didn't attack because it would be suicidal. But the AI will suicidally attack if that's the only option. If they can hit. So, and even if there's a chain guard up, if they have a hit rate, and they could they could deal damage without the chain guard, they'll still go for it even with the chain guard up. So that, even though it didn't attack the way it wanted to, it still avoided her and went after a worse target that it had no chance of killing, which is still useful. Okay, so I'm gonna have her use a Vol- oh no, don't use Volner, just sit on this healing tile. There you go. Okay, now we have these guys to deal with. So, we'll get a chain guard set up. We'll make use of that in like some enemy phasing. The boss is coming in. Bosses are another good thing to deal with. So like if you have, so this guy's a tomahawk, right? So here's like a perfect example. He has 10 speed, he has a tomahawk. So I can manipulate this so that he attacks exactly how I want him to. So this is a, here's an example. Here's here's the redemption arc. Okay, another thing chain guard can do is prevent breaking. So he's gonna attack Chloe. He, he has to, he, he wants to. Look at this, he attacks Chloe. It's his only option. Chain guard, even if it hits, doesn't matter. She puts damage on him. So even if he would have hit, the chain guard would prevent breaking. Hugely important for enemy phase tanking. Being able to prevent breaking means you can counterattack. So let's say the only enemy that hits you would break you, or multiple enemies can break you. You can at the very least not get broken for a single hit, counterattack them, 
get some damage on and then tank the rest. So that's also a huge use case. And I think you know what I'm going to do here. <laughs> if the game gives this to you and you don't take it, if you don't take these opportunities, you're doing it wrong. Like, you have to. Come on, dude. Three kills. Three kills. I'm taking that. That's an opportunity I am always taking. And then I can just smack this guy. Just beat him to death with a cool new Fire Emblem Heroes weapon. The other thing that's nice about Chain Guard, if an enemy hits you and you dodge, it doesn't use the Chain Guard. So if multiple enemies miss and then one finally does hit, the Chain Guard will kick in. So that is what happened earlier. You can kind of see that I kicked in a little bit late or just didn't trigger because the dude missed. And hey, I'll take a miss over that because that means next turn I can Chain Guard. And this turn she can beat someone to death. <laughs> this is very satisfying. Fram has no damage. <laughs> Letting her beat someone up. It's very fun. But Chain Guard is nice. It's good for maps without emblem rings, like Chapter 11 and Chapter 22. It's good for saving emblem ring, or like, saving emblem rings, or using them in between. So, like, let's say your Lucina Bonded Shield is down. Having, like, one or two Chain Guarders can help deal with more enemies than you would be able to handle otherwise. Another thing that's nice is it actually does build meter. So if a unit chain guards successfully, they build a bar towards their engage. So it is something that's also pretty cool. All right, so I probably want to enemy phase here. I'm actually going to undo moving Fram there. Now, Chloe probably can't stand out in the open here. Actually, she kind of can. She can take 25 damage. But we're going to... I guess we'll kind of bait this dude. So he'll hit her. He's going to go for her because it's big damage. And then we're going to individually enemy phase here, I want to say. 20 damage. He might be able to stack damage on Anna, but we'll, 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 we'll be a little creative here. Let's see. Let's see if this works out. So now her hit, her dodge rate's very high, Fram. So as long as he doesn't hit Fram, let me see if I predict his behavior. All right, so here we go. So that dude missed, so chain guard was not consumed. That's huge. Also missed. We get a kill. That's nice. And then he's going to hit Chloe. Tell me, once, Lords, am I not... Yep. So we baited him into hitting Chloe. So now our front line is safe. We still have more chain guards. So, for example, I could do something like this now. I could drop back. Hit this dude at 11. And not 11, like 11 sword, you know what I mean? Like, not like the number. All right, and then we can chain guard again. So when it misses, it's actually nice. All right, and then this situation, what I can do. Item. Equip a javelin. Use a vulnerary. So we're counterattacking. This is two range. So that's a miss. We take those. It's 70%, so it could miss. 70%. There's the chain guard. So you can see that even, you know, a single chain guard, it kind of gives you like an insurance. It's like an insurance policy. Like it can help you to the point where if enemies keep missing, then you can keep using it. And you can kind of hold down positions just off of the chain guard. Now these enemies don't pose like a serious threat to these units because these are power leveled units. But if enemies keep missing, it's just free chain guarding and also you can reset the health of the chain guarders with Sadal who passively heals in two range which is definitely useful all right so now it looks like we're gonna have to deal with this guy so we're just gonna load we're just gonna do this simply we're gonna load star him that's a health bar we're gonna smack him say the word the word and <laughs> we're gonna say the word we're gonna smack him again. We're just gonna keep smacking him and whacking him until he gets, until he gets knocked into submission. Okay, now what we want to do here? Pretty sure Anna has lethal here easily. So Anna lethal. All right, so Anna has lethal, and then we want to beat a dude up. So milk, XP, <laughs> punch a guy with shielding art, a, re a damage reduced shielding art with the Makai engraving. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for chain guarding. 
and also the second half of this map, because this is a seven-man challenge run at the same time. Uh, but it's pretty useful. I'd recommend having like two to three units that can do it and just running a bunch of like hard carries. So that way when you need to mitigate damage on your support units or your hard carries, you have access to it. And it's a pretty useful tool, honestly. We've won. I think in my earlier runs, I undervalued utility in this game. But in my later runs, I'm starting to think that like half your team should be utility units and the other half should just be damage carries. So that way you have insanely crazy units with great weapons that are engraved, uh, good SP builds, you know, like high SP from Welling, and then the rest is just utility. And Chain Guards are one of those utility archetypes. So that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or found this interesting. I'll see you in the next one.